Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, what's up? I'm Nev from the Fan and Collector's Haven. Today I want to talk a little bit about Star Wars, about the expanded universe, about the universe and continuity, and why it just breaks my heart. Now, like many of you, I've been a Star Wars fan forever. I think I first got into it once the first THX version was released on VHS. Not, uh, not the special edition where they added new things in, but that was my first look into Star Wars. And man, it blew my mind. I thought it was the best. I got into the books. I got into the comic books. I got into everything. Everything I get. I got the action figures. I got the micro machines. And then later on, when talking to my friends, we had debates about how things worked, about what we read, and uh, how the universe goes. And it was then that I quickly discovered the legends or the continuity and I quickly started to get turned off. Now, when I was little, I invested a lot of time and energy into the Star Wars universe, and it is a wondrous place. It is a great place, and uh, I don't think any kid should be without the option to get into it. But one thing that I kept coming back to is the stuff that I was reading, the stuff that I was investing my time and money into, wasn't technically part of the story. Now, as many of you know, there are different versions of canon of exactly how things happen um, and just recently when Disney bought Star Wars it's been getting even worse even more confusing so back in the day let's say before Disney bought Star Wars there was there was George Lucas's version of things and his was absolute canon and unless he said anything else was part of canon it wasn't canon it wasn't actually part of the storyline. Now, when I was a kid, reading these novels would take a long time. A really long time. And ultimately, what was disheartening me was finding out a book like Shadows of the Empire, a book that was supposed to take place between uh, part two and three, during part two and uh, almost into part three, wasn't actually canon even though it was such a big deal there were video games made of it there were there were uh comics there were action figures all made on this timeline that george lucas was benefiting from financially but wasn't actually part of the story so if it's not part of the story ultimately it is fan fiction that is paid for which is just disgusting if you take a look at uh at the different versions of timelines basically that they have if you take a look at the original star wars comics i believe it was from marvel comics it goes way off the deep end there's a green rabbit in it everything is so much different uh obi-wan kenobi is basically like a don quixote uh he's not all there he's not all there the people are investing their time and their money into this marvel comics was sending these storylines to Lucas, and Lucas was saying, or Lucas's people are saying, yeah, yeah, this is good, this is good. Nope, ultimately paid fan fiction that was put into comics. Now, a lot of the things that are brought out, Lucas does take and put into his, uh, into his movies. Uh, oh, I'm gonna kick myself, I can't remember the name of it. The, the planet that's all one big city, I want to say Coruscant, uh, yeah, Coruscant, which is just one big city all the way around. It's the first city that you see in part three. It was first introduced in the movies in the, ex in, uh, the special edition that was added in uh, when all of the Ewoks are celebrating. You get to see Coruscant, and it's all big and happy, and that was something another author wrote and brought into it. So officially, George Lucas made it canon. Before that, it was not canon. There's so much going on that isn't canon that people are paying money for that Lucas is approving, and that's just disgusting. And I'm not just seeing it here. I'm seeing it with the Alien franchise. I'm seeing it with Predator. I'm seeing it with every science fiction franchise that's out there. I am sick of paying money for fan fiction that is approved. It just doesn't make any sense. So what's also very sickening now is Disney owns the continuity. So whatever Lucas did, not only can Disney change what Lucas did, but they're taking it into an entirely different direction. Lucas told Disney how he wanted the films to go, but Disney took a look and said, no, we're not doing that. We're gonna do something 
totally different, which just blows my mind. So now you have another layer, in my opinion, you have another layer of the timeline. You have, uh, I think there's like four or five different versions that go down to S rank uh, continuity. And George Lucas's was basically number one. But now technically, financially, Disney's continuity is number one. But what's interesting is you have George Lucas's continuity, what he was going to do, and what I don't believe has ever been explored. And then you have Disney's continuity, which is going to go totally off the shelf for George Lucas. Now, the thing is, George Lucas's continuity should matter more than Disney's. We're never going to know what George Lucas's continuity was going to be because I'm pretty sure he's, uh, he's not allowed to tell us. He's not allowed to go there. Now, we can't have looks into books. And from what I understand, George Lucas wanted Han and Leia to have two children. And in books, the continuity kind of went this way. But then you gotta wonder, did, is he gonna change that later? And why would he... Why would he let us spend money thinking that that was a continuity and then going around and changing it later? It's just, it's just kind of heartbreaking as a fan to see this science fiction stuff get uh, torn up, get changed. But I gotta say, Disney's doing pretty good things. When I seen the, uh, the original, the original, the prequels, I love part one. I love part one. I thought part two was pretty bad and I didn't like part three. I thought the whole thing was just shot in front of a green screen. I, I had no love for it. And then when I seen the way Disney did it, I swear to God, they actually went out to location. The forest scenes were freaking awesome. But at the same time, what's up with the continuity? It's just heartbreaking. I put all this time, money, and effort into this stuff. I enjoy it. But then when I want to talk to friends about how things go, it's all over the place. It's all over the place. Okay, so when I was into the books, one thing that I remember constantly running across was the Death Star in episode six over if it was being done on time to the best ability of the staff or if it was not i believe it was in shadows of the empire i, I know in shadows of the empire it was brought up and in another book it was also brought up these books were all from the same publishers and within these books it said from the side of the person that was running the death star that there was absolutely no way that they could get it going on time because of reasonable reasons. And then in another book, same again, same publisher, it said that Darth Vader knew damn well that they were they were pussyfooting around and they weren't getting stuff done on time. This stuff drove me nuts. Another thing that drove me nuts is in the book, everyone, everybody fought for the resistance, fought for the rebels. Everyone in Jabba's palace, you know that chick with the six boobs? Oh, she was somehow part of the resistance. Everyone is part of the resistance. It just kind of gets unreasonably unbelievable. But then again, maybe this franchise was started for children. But if this franchise was started for 13-year-olds, take a look at the books that they got made. These books are not for 13-year-olds to be going through. Of course, we get a few super intelligent ones that can. But I just kind of get the feeling like us as consumers are being taken for a ride with continuity and science fiction things, particularly Star Wars. I love the franchise. I will always love the franchise. But I hope they get their stuff straight. Anyways, that's it from me from the Collector's Haven. Have a good one, folks. Catch you later.